Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and somebody had a question for Mark Rosewater, and he had an answer, and I'm just gonna let that be the preface. Let's just read it. By the way, I just kind of skimmed it, and I'm like, oh, this should be good, so I've read maybe 10% of this. Live reaction, let's go. So, Winter Warp on uh, Mark's awful Tumblr blog asked, Hi Mark. Let me stop you right there. You're supposed to put, oh, hi, Mark. But anyway, I have a personal experience that I'd like to share that affects my perspective on the conversations around product fatigue. Oh. Oh, this gonna be good. If you're not familiar with the term, it's just WotC releasing too much crap and people can't keep up with it. Um, They've actually lowered the number of standard products since they did five in a year. And if you just play standard, ignore everything else. And then, like, reprint sets just make the game cheaper. I think the number one complaints are coming from people in the Eternal formats, like Commander, or even Popper or Modern, where it's like, oh, well, I have to have this for my deck. Oh, well, clearly this was designed for my deck, which, <laughs> yes, it was. It was not an accident. And people are just getting tired of it, you know? And it's like, yeah, does your deck really need to be more powerful? You know, ask yourself that. For your playgroup, is that a good thing? And, you know, adding one, two, three cards, okay. But before this becomes the product fatigue uh, video, I just wanted to, like, establish that that's people's complaint. Is that too much stuff is coming out that they quote-unquote have to buy. Even though that doesn't apply to standard in any way, shape, or form. There's still the same number of products per year. But nobody plays it. I have to throw one more thing in, though. If you see a secret layer and say, well, I have to buy this now, you're the one with the problem. It's not Watsy, it's you. So that's product fatigue. Okay, so he goes on to say, when the original Game Night product came out, I didn't even know that it existed. I didn't learn about its existence until something like two years later. By the way, a lot of you had that reaction when I made a video on it. So my thought was, I would have liked to have known about that at the time. My reaction to having completely and utterly been unaware of a product like that was to try to increase the amount of effort I put into learning about new products that were coming out in order to prevent another product like that that I would like to engage with from going under my radar. The problem is that even just paying attention to what's coming out can become exhausting and overwhelming with the amount of products which have been getting released. So I guess my point is that when I hear you and other spokespeople respond to complaints of product fatigue by saying, only engage with the products that most excite you, that doesn't seem to address the problem that the process of paying attention in order to know what products most excite me uh, can itself be overwhelming and exhausting. He makes a really good point there, by the way. Paying attention can be exhausting. And yeah, with all the things I do in a day, just even me personally, let's just set aside the YouTube channel. Once a week? Like, literally, I think they released 47 products in uh, last year or this year or whatever. I don't remember what the time period was, but I saw the graph. It's almost one per week. You know, they don't stay grum like that, but honestly, once every two weeks, probably. I think we get a new product announcement every two weeks. I think that's fair. I have to look at it. It's legality, what cards are in it, it's price, it's availability, all that. And, like, that takes time, you know, to look at the cards and to cut through all the marketing fluff BS. You know, oh, it's this, it's that. Like, just tell me what it really is, you know? And then all the other magic news. Like, you, you don't follow just products and not follow any of the news or announcements or any of the other stuff. So it's like you end up paying so much attention to magic just to find out if it's even something that you're interested in. So I 100% agree with that. So he ends with, and not paying attention can lead to products that, would have, uh, that you would have loved going under your radar. I am shocked that Mark didn't run far, far away from this... Uh, question here but his answer is almost double the length of the question so he starts with here's the challenge there's a lot of different magic players that want very different things no we all want you to stop printing less product we all we're all on the same page there uh we want to produce what makes magic special for each player in enough volume that they stay invested See, that's already not true. It's the typical either Mark doesn't know how the community the product works or he's just trying to gaslight everybody to save his job and save the company. I'm not sure which. And historically, it's been proven to be a mix, so I really don't know which. Anybody can, quote, stay invested in running the same, like, five to ten commander decks forever without you having to give us new cards for it. That's how Eternal works. Plus, tabletop, free-for-all... A lot of people that have been playing for years have like 15 decks. Who cares about legality, power level, whatever? Just here's a fun deck that'll be fun against your deck. Let's run them. I mean, how often do you even get together with your friends to play Magic, you know? So it's like we, we could go three years with literally nothing changing. And like he thinks each player has to have enough volume to stay invested. No. That is just like completely the opposite of true. It's not even somewhat close to true. It is just blatantly false. 
No, if you're the type of person who gets sick of certain decks all the time, or if you're a drafter, because remember, he did say there's a lot of different magic players. Some only play sealed, or just limited in general. Some only play the latest set that comes out. Yeah, if you only come up with four standard sets and that's it, and somebody's like, okay, it's been 18 weeks of this, I want something new, like, I, I kind of get that. I don't think that that's more than 5 to 10% of the community, and that's, that's putting it real generous. It's probably 1%. Like, super hardcore plus virtually unlimited money? Come on, who, who's that interested? I mean, a lot of you guys watching this, but remember, the 90-10 rule. They, they stated this in their own research. 10% of people will give a crap about competitive, will go to FNM, go to structured events, and go to pre-releases. The other 90% just tabletop, get it at Walmart, don't care, play with old stuff, don't know what standard is, don't care. They just, here's a fun card game, we play it once in a while. I used to play this structured, now I don't. Now it's free for all. Oh, I log into Arena once in a while and play a free event. You know, like, it's ultra, ultra casual. That's the overwhelming majority. Now, that's by person count. That's not by spent dollar. And you go where the dollars are. If one customer is spending 20 bucks a year and the other one's spending 900 you should be 45 times more oriented to the person dropping $900. So every time they come out with, yeah, but you don't get it, we're orienting this to this, we made this choice because of this, because X percent, X portion, this whatever of the community, no, not all customers are created equal, and you know this. That's when you know they're lying to you. They're just trying to justify their greed or coming out with some stupid thing that Hasbro demanded that they come out with, and it, it sounds right until you know how business works. So right off the bat, we're in typical Mark Rosewater delusion land. So let's continue with his stupid answer. So he says, that's what's going on. We're trying to make sure our proverbial buffet always has the food that excites each individual diner. Putting out less food means that we're depriving some diners of food that makes them most excited to come to the buffet. We do that long enough and they stop coming. Who cares? Cater to the big spenders. Well, this person's rolling up to the buffet and getting charged $500, and this person's getting charged $5. Oh, we better cater to everyone and make sure we have... No. No. One person does not equal one person. A person is not a standard unit of measure. Not in the business world. Now, there's a little more to it. A, a low-spending person could introduce five more people into the game, and one or two or three or all of them could be a high spender. Okay? It's... It, more people is better. There is, like, an intangible value past what one person spends. There's notoriety, there's like, uh, what do they call that, like the, the snowball effect, where it's like once you hit a certain mass, then everybody's heard of the game, you know? And you can't get there if you just target the big spenders, okay? You need just bulk people to be there to make your game look good, and to make the numbers look good, and to have them spread it to other people. So like the future value of, I'll just say a whale, or like a high spender, not like crazy, you know, 1% whale, I drop a grand on everything, you know, that's what people think when it's whale, but it's like, somebody who plays the game seriously and drops a couple hundred bucks in a year. Or more. You have to draw them in using other people. You need the crowd. So there's a little truth to that, but still that, that doesn't match what he's saying. And remember, he's not in charge of marketing or business or finance or accounting or, well, I guess he is product design, but not entirely. So he goes on to say, a good example of this is while people suggest we offer less products, uh, which products go away is under great debate. Um, Once again, let me, let me just throw this out there. Thousand dollar proxies. How about that? I, I think I heard from a, a couple people in the community that 105% of the community wants that to end. I mean, the overwhelming majority of people want secret layers to go away. And yet the sales keep coming in, but you gotta wonder how many are investors who are just hoping in five years they can flip it. I don't care if some rich middlemen lose their money, okay? But that's, I think, given Wizards a, an incorrect um, take on who's buying what. Although, remember, they used to do, like, limit two per person, and then they did limit five. Now it's, like, limit ten per person per day per order. They don't. If you want to sweep up 50, who cares? I bet they don't even have address duplicate protection. Super exclusive anti-scalper, that's how it started, and now it's just, like, whatever. Who wants to buy it? If they want to wave money in your face, we'll take it. We don't care anymore. All they care about is money. So I think they know who they're selling those to, you know what I mean? So he says, yeah, nobody agrees on which product wants to go away. Everybody just, if I were to put words in his mouth, just basically says, um, well, the ones I don't like need to go away. And then everybody has a different take on that. So not entirely incorrect, but still not, not the whole picture. He's still wrong. They still need to release less stuff, lower prices and stop ripping people off. And fix standard because without standard, you have nothing. And I'm glad, honestly, Standard, as we know, it is going away in 2023. Literally the worst kept secret in all of Magic. 
I think they leaked that information in, in rumors on purpose just to keep people from quitting on the spot so that there, there's a, maybe a light at the end of the tunnel. Although with how greedy they've been, it should be very interesting to see what they do with it. So he does say also we're trying to attract new diners. That's right. We're going back to that metaphor. Uh, certain food might make some diners sample the buffet that haven't tried it before. New lifeblood is fundamental to any game, but especially one with magic's longevity. Any food option we remove impacts someone who makes them enjoy... Th Wait. Any food option we remove impacts someone... And, oh, and makes them enjoy the buffet less. I can read. Uh, I get that. It makes the buffet harder to process at large, but fundamentally a buffet is about picking and choosing the food that makes the best meal for you, not groking the menu as a whole. I don't know what that word means, but I kind of get it. All right, so what I think is going on is Magic has a, is at another flux point. Oh, there is more than hinting that we're about to see massive changes. Uh, and it's had many over the years. It's adapting to player desires and changing in new ways. Yeah, Hasbro breathing down your necks and saying, give me more money, please. And then you broke standard by power ramping it and making it impossible to trace in paper. You cannot figure out what's going on. There's all these nine different types of counters and delayed triggers. It's a mess. It's an absolute untrackable mess where you can barely tell what the hell's going on in the lowest powered format, mind you, even on a computer. And then Historic was greedy, uh, Explorer, nobody's touching, it's it's a mess. You flew too close to the sun, you gotta bring in a ton of people with super cheap up front, and then the ones who will spend more, spend more. That's it. It's the whale philosophy, you can't chase just the whales. And right now when they came out with Historic and every Historic anthology was like 90% rares and like 10% mythics with like one uncommon sprinkled in to make themselves save face... Nope. Everybody right off the bat said, nope, I'm not interested, too expensive, I'm not even going to get in this boat in the first place because I know where it's going and I'm not interested. It, and it's not like they don't understand that you need to get people in dirt cheap. They used to give away welcome decks for free, subsidized at the stores. It's like, here, want to play this game? Oh, I don't know if I want to invest, you know, 20, 30 bucks into a, you know, some kind of deck. Here, just have this for free. And also... I'll teach you how to play. Like, there, you can't get more people in quicker than that. I guess if you actively paid them to start playing, and now they've moved on to, oh, you want to get into standard? Well, the learning curve and the money and, like, just the mana base, because they refuse to take the important lands, the dual lands and tri lands, out of the rare slot. It's like, oh, you want to play our game? Hundred bucks. That's what's holding Warhammer back right now. Boy. There's nothing stopping you from, you know, putting a, a carved potato out there and saying, this is a unit, let's just mock it up. Okay, now I'm going to buy the real product, to kind of like D&D. Well, here's this campaign I made myself, and you can use anything as a miniature, or borrow mine, and here's some dice. You know, five bucks you're in, and then you get into, well, I want to run this module, I want to get this book, I want to get better miniatures, I want to get a, a cool realistic thing, a 3D, whatever, you know. And D&D's been doing great right up until they ruined that a couple weeks ago. So, uh, I guess I'll make a video on that at some point. And what a coincidence, it's the same company, different division, and they are also owned by Hasbro. Huh. Who had absolute trash for quarterly numbers. Hmm. I wonder if those go together. Do you guys think that's a coincidence? I don't know, I can't tell. So he closes with, just to reiterate, what I think is going on is Magic is at another flux point and it's had many over the years. Uh, it's adapting to player desires and changing in new ways when that happens. Both the audience and the R&D has to adapt as well. Maybe we have to change how we communicate new products. Maybe there needs to be a lighter track for those that want a sense of what's coming without the depth that normally or that we normally provide. No, I'm going to want all the information before I buy it. I, I don't think that that's going to work. Um, but thank God he's not in charge of marketing. <laughs> uh, I agree that old systems might not make sense in the new world. Oh, I wonder if they're going to change standard or get rid of it or modify it. Hmm. Uh, oh, remember, standard's not even that old and they used to have extended and then it became modern. And huh, I wonder if they're going to change that and shorten it. Huh. But I don't think it's a reason to reject the new world. Well, I do because it's been a giant trail of greed and anti-consumer crap. So I, I think we should reject it. He's basically saying, take our word for it. Trust me, bro. <laughs> no. I'd ask, like, rhetorically, what did you do to earn my trust? And then laugh about all the things you did to completely break my trust. So he closes with, it's a reason to figure out how to adapt. Yeah, you know what you should do is change how standard works, huh? Because that's your bread and butter. 
But they're going to find a way to have Hasbro creep in and make it even more expensive. And people are going to be like, okay, yeah, I get it. Cool. Eight sets was too many. Their biggest, most enormous mistake in the recent era of Magic was listening to the extremely loud net decking whiners, the like 1% of players online that said, but now I can't keep my cards as long when they changed from a three, uh, three set block to two and then one and then announced they were going to one and then said, but we're going to rotate earlier. Everybody was like, but, but my lands, which yeah, I mean, lands. Uh, yeah. The entire rest of the argument was completely ridiculous saying, oh, but I have to rebuild my deck more often. I can no longer just build a deck on day one after rotation and play it for two years straight. Just, every time a new set comes out, you have to modify or rebuild your deck. Okay. So that's quarterly. That's crap. If there was a deck post rotation that was winning and that we're getting next close to the next rotation and still winning, they would have done something about it. They want people to buy the new stuff, okay? They will artificially either kill it off with a couple of mechanics, a couple individual cards thrown into a new set, like a graveyard clear for zero, like Tormods, or targeted one cost kill spells that just wreck your complete and utter, you know, deck archetype from the ground up. You don't get to build and play a deck that long. Now, if people are like, yeah, but similarities and this and that, no, you usually have to change whole colors, okay? That's why if we had a lower power level overall, you could just build whatever the hell you wanted as long as it's halfway competent, you could stand a chance of, of winning with it. Right now, if I just decided I'm going to build this, good competent deck, some ramp, it's got early game, mid-range, it's got a little bit of control, you will get completely destroyed by the Hottie Jin deck, Red Rush, you cannot compete unless you're playing one of the net decks right now. Or if you're as good at deck building as me, because, well, you've seen my streams, I build some whack stuff, and just absolutely crush people's hopes and dreams and mythic with it. Very entertaining, very funny. But I've been building net deck assassin decks for a very long time, and even I'm fed up with it because what the hell are you going to do about super drawn out hyper defensive mono blue or blue black hottie gin control a thon crap or red rush? Those are complete opposites, and arena will steer you into the one that you lose to the most. And if you win too much, you'll get the famous go first penalty. How does that one work? You don't get to. That's how it works. So in closing, while Magic still seems to think that, like, we're the number one, we're the biggest, oh, it's just COVID, it's just this, everything's down, the economy, whatever, making all these excuses, what you have to realize is that Magic is competing with literally anything else I could be doing with my time, including any video game at all. And I don't just mean post-arena, I mean, like, Friday night I could just be playing Skyrim for the hundred billionth time, or Morrowind, or Oblivion. Those are the only options. <laughs> no, just kidding. And then they're running into the, you know, walls like, oh, well, people, even if they want the product, they only have a certain amount of money. I, I, I'm sure there's an actual economic term for this, a wallet fatigue or max something or probably some acronym. I call it the roller coaster tycoon theory because people can walk into your park and if you charge them 60 bucks and they got 70 in their wallet, yes, that's even how RCT1 worked back in the day on XP. It doesn't matter if they really, really want your $12 hot dogs because they're in such a good spot and that you did marketing and all this stuff. If they don't have the money, all they're going to do is be like, oh, I want that, but I don't have enough money. Well, now I'm actually mad because I really want that. And I don't have enough money. Now they might be motivated to just go make more money, but at the end of the day, they got to pay their bills and stuff and people can't just flex their work. Usually they got like a life and family and other things to do and obligations. You can't just say, I'm going to work 50 hours this week. You know, some people can, some people can't. I would dare say most people can't. I mean, anybody could go do some side hustle, have a garage sale or rummage sale is the proper term for, for you who don't live in Wisconsin. And if you could start a little side hustle business, learn to groom dogs, you know, clean cars or you know, detail them or just like whatever, like anybody can do that. I know a guy who buys uh, RVs and campers, fixes them up and flips them for double. He just does it on weekends when he needs money because uh, his job is kind of on and off. But like, yeah, I mean, it's just anybody can can make a little more money, but at a certain point, then they run out of time to play the game. If they're looking at that versus, you know what, this is too expensive. I'm just going to sit this rotation out. I'm just going to kind of pause for a year or their store closed or their friends quit because it was too expensive. Now they got nobody to play with. That's another huge factor where it's, it's like the whole, you know, like I said, you need people to get people. Well, you, if you start losing people, that's going to cause it to cascade the other way and you're going to lose more people. You've got to have a player, an individual customer count that's enough to play the game and then enough income to prop up the stores. You need both. If it's just four whales running net decks, they're going to get real pissed off and play it against each other. I've seen it. And then they resort to just casual whatever FNM anything goes and just shaking it up and having fun and not playing standard. And well, look where we are now.
So it's like, how many things do they have to fix? Less products, stop pissing people off, um, stop raising prices, which Biden just signed another, what, $1.7 trillion spending. So I believe they're going to just print that money straight up, not even borrow it, just print it. So there's another couple percent inflation, almost double digits. So everything in your life, uh, fuel, food, everything is going to go up another, you know, 10%, 5%, 15%, depends what kind of time frame you're looking at. If you think Magic's going to survive that in the state it's in, no, they, they should have already been getting out ahead of this, be like, oh crap, we're a luxury brand and people can do cheaper other things, like buy a video game for 20 bucks and then play it for a thousand hours. They're going to move on to that. What we need to do is do the opposite. We need to be like, okay, we got your back. You, you want, you know, a nice refreshing time away from all the stress and living and cost of everything. We're going to basically slash prices 75%. And then you get massive influx of players. The whales still spend. That's where your money comes from anyway. They would have been raking in the money. But Hasbro and Watsy don't understand that. They don't understand or they don't care or somebody who should not have a business degree or a business related job comes in and tells them what they think they should do in the short term to prop up the stock price because public traded companies, you know, they always make the right decisions for the long-term health of a company. They just didn't have the balls to say, you know what, it's a lull, it's this, it's that, deal with it, who cares? And now look where they nosedived and then they just jump out the window in a little golden parachute float down and go ruin a different company. Those types need to be driven the hell out. Those are the suits that, that ruined Cyberpunk. Those are the people that ruined Fallout 76. Where they're like, no, we're releasing now because we have to, because stocks. Uh, what, what do you mean it, it doesn't just come together because I said so? What do you mean it's not ready till it's ready? What do you mean this was a disaster and it's all my fault? Bye, I'm already out the door. One photo, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I'm already in the parking lot. I'm already on LinkedIn on my phone. I'm not listening to you. I'm getting a better job. Yeah, those people, don't let them anywhere near your company if you're big or if, especially if you're publicly traded. And that's who's ruining it. And, and it just gets worse when the finances get desperate. Some idiot is like, well, we made 7% gains. Cool. Uh, maybe I can make it 10 because I want to impress people and I want to look good. That's one thing. Oh my God, the stock price is down 10% because of factors out of our control or within or whatever. Um, we need to do emergency things that aren't healthy. Yeah, those, watch out. That Those are the decisions that lead you to where we are now in the magic world. If you're wondering how this all came about, I like to give the full picture. So if you appreciate that and you've made it this far in the video, you might as well subscribe because I tell it like it is. And I love the comments of you guys saying, hey, this is like the only magic channel I watch anymore because you just tell it like it is. Give all the information. Don't just read headlines and have no idea what you're talking about like most YouTubers. Always appreciate that and your support, especially going into the worst part of the year financially for YouTubers and for me personally because of circumstances. So I never mentioned this, but if you want to support me directly, we got the Patreon link in the description. Uh, we got YouTube memberships, which is always huge. Or if you just want to support everybody you watch simultaneously, uh, YouTube premium. No ads. You can download it straight to your uh, phone and you don't, you can like on a drive or whatever, listen to a podcast without burning your bandwidth. I mean, I would sign up for YouTube Premium before Netflix or Hulu or any of that garbage right now. HBO Max, just complete woke trash. I'm not saying YouTube is that much better, but at least it benefits the creators. We get, I think last time I checked, and this is all over the place, but it's about 60 times more lucrative to have one person view, uh, or one person viewing that is YouTube Premium that watches an average amount of stuff, but watches your channel pretty heavily. With my video upload schedule and average video length, because that's a big thing, uh, they are about as valuable as 60 people that are watching for free. So if you want to benefit yourself while simultaneously um, supporting everybody you watch without having to really do anything, yeah, I'd recommend it. This isn't sponsor or anything. It's, well, obviously it's, you know, benefits me, but I figured I'd mention it just in case people, I don't know, those people still don't even know it exists. And I guess if, if I'm going to throw it in there, you know, we're having YouTube revelations. Did you know that they just straight up have like full movies, like full movies, just ad supported. And they're like good movies. There's stuff like, like Netflix wouldn't have the money for old nineties, classics, holiday classics. Like they got everything and very, very few of them are marked as uh, premium only. A lot of them say, um, free with ads. So when I want to jump on a good movie, I usually just do that. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> and an enormous amount of people don't know that that exists. Hell, I'll put a link in the description. I mean, guys, they got Killer Clowns from Outer Space. They got Who Framed Roger Rabbit, free with ads. They've got um, While You Were Sleeping. That's huge. Shutter Island, free with ads. I mean, Edward Scissor's hands. Like, you, you wouldn't find that on Netflix 15 years ago. Pink Panther, So I Married an Axe Murderer, Never Ending Story 2. Little Shop of Horrors. The Ghost in the Shell movie, free with ads. Charlotte's Web, Train to Busan. The original Children of the Corn. Oh my gosh, the original 1995 Hackers. If you haven't watched that. I'll be honest with you. Every single thing I just named is better than my channel. 
And everybody I've ever mentioned this to, they're like, what do you mean they have like full actual cinema movies? They're like, oh, you mean like that YouTube premium, YouTube red, YouTube se original series, and then they cancel the PewDiePie thing? No, they like, they have like Hollywood stuff, like OG good movies. For real, dude, you guys got to check that out. So, um, hey, thanks for watching. Go watch some cool stuff. Oh my God, they got the meerkats. I'm still scrolling. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time.